what the Supreme Court basically said is, if you apply our reasoning here for uh, educational benefits to name, image, and likeness, or to, to frankly, to pay, uh, how is the how is the NCAA going to justify uh, its position on that? They're not going to be able to do it, or at least they don't see a way that they can do it. And they're not going to get that sort of presumption that their rules are pro-competitive. Uh, they're going to have to prove that they're not anti-competitive, and they're going to have a difficult time doing it, and I don't think they can. And you know, look, Justice Kavanaugh uh, wrote something that I think a lot of us have been saying for a long time. If you applied this to any other industry, it would be per se illegal and struck down immediately. Uh, so now the NCAA is just like everybody else. I mean, they, they, they are they – are, th- this is fact. The NCAA has been found in courts around the country and twice now by the Supreme Court to be a serial antitrust violator. And, and that's beyond discussion. That, that's fact. And I think the message has been sent by the highest court in the land to other courts uh, in this country that the NCAA no longer is going to get protection from the courts. They're going to be like every other multi-billion dollar business, and they're going to have to stop violating federal antitrust law. But, but another thing it means, Key, is that name, image, and likeness, the NCAA is not going to pass any name, image, and likeness legislation on its own now. Because those include restrictions, and those restrictions are going to be struck down by the courts. And so they're not going to do it. They're going to go back on bended knee to Congress and say, please bail us out of this by allowing us to continue to violate antitrust law. And I, I, find, I would find it really hard to believe that Congress is going to allow them to do that. So what we'll see coming up are, are we're, going to, we're going to go forward, and, and everybody's going to be allowed to do what their state allows them to do with regard to name, image, and likeness. And what I believe is going to happen is we're going to see that the world will remain firmly on its axis. The business will go forward. (laughs) Fans will come into the stadiums and we'll be just fine. And that's exactly what the NCAA doesn't want because uh, they've been saying that the world will crumble if athletes get more than a scholarship, and it won't. JB, sunlight is a great disinfectant. i got to tell you that. And uh, to use a boxing analogy, is this the – opening punch of the final combination for the NCAA? Yeah, Jay, I think it, I think this signals that amateurism, I, I mean, I, I don't think amateurism exists now. I think it's a phony concept and it's just a, it's just a restriction on one class of person in a multi-billion dollar business. I mean, just to give you an example, uh, you know, 30 years ago, the NCAA had something called a restricted earnings coach in, in basketball where it was really well intended, they want to give they wanted to give younger coaches an opportunity to learn while they were you know uh, learn as a coach and move up in the business. So they could only be paid fifteen thousand dollars. Schools started rotating their coaching staff through that position and all that stuff. So the the coaches sued under the same theory that that the athletes sued here in the Alston case, and and that was seen as an antitrust violation. So there, there's no debate that the NCAA can't. You know, all the institutions can't get together and say, okay, here's, what, here's the limit on what we can pay coaches. Here's the limit on, on what we can pay uh, administrators. You know, they know that would be an antitrust violation, but they've always been given deference by the courts that they can do this to athletes, that somehow um, you know, amateurism is, a, is a, uh, an important part of the college sports industry, an important part of the American landscape. And, and the, court, the Supreme Court just said, no, it's not. None of that, none of that was a ruling. None of that is true, and uh, so you're on your own, and you got to start um, doing business just like everybody else. So I think it's a pretty clear signal that the NCAA's rules are going to be challenged, and they're going to lose. While they probably have won 75 percent of the cases on this stuff, they're going to start losing all of them now, and and I think they know it. Uh, so amateur, I don't think amateurism has ever been real. It's always been a sham, but the Supreme court just basically said it's a sham and they said it's open season on, on these rules. And we're going to see a lot of lawsuits coming up right now. And, uh, and I think the plaintiffs in those lawsuits are going to win them.